10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 172. Hey everybody, welcome back into yet another episode of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. This is episode 172. I am Nick Manella. I'm the creator and host of this show. If you are brand new to the show, welcome in. So happy to have you. If you're a returning customer, then of course we are glad to have you back learning more. And uh, yeah, just very happy to be here this week. So this week is going to be our Lick of the Month episode, and this one's going to focus on Dexter Gordon. We're going to go back to something that we talked about a couple of episodes ago where we talked about stylizing a melody, but this time we're going to take a look at a short section of Dexter's solo from 3 o'clock in the morning. So if you haven't listened to Stylizing a Melody Part 1, then go back and check that out just so you have some context of where we're at. Um, Just to let you know, you can get the PDF for this episode and all of the other episodes that we've ever done by checking out our Patreon page. You can find that by going to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, clicking on one of the Patreon banners, Going over to Patreon and pledging your support, it only costs you $3 a month to get all of the PDFs and all of the materials that we ever put out on here. We also offer some fantastic discounts to all of the materials in our store. So I've got some people to thank this week for signing up to become patrons. Thank you to Gabrielle, Charles, Simon, Carmen, and Anthony. Thank you guys so much for choosing to support the show, become part of the 10-Minute Jazz Lesson family, and get your hands on a ton of materials that are going to make your playing better. All right, let's jump into today's episode. So we talked a couple of episodes about the tune 3 o'clock in the morning from the album Go by the Dexter Gordon Quartet, and we were talking about the melody, how hip he plays the melody. And, you know, I absolutely believe that learning that melody, learning to play it exactly like he does, is going to be a huge, huge thing for you. But of course, we also want to look at the solo a little bit. But, you know, to stay on the theme of kind of simple is better and melodicism is far better than doing a lot of really technical things, We're going to take a look at a particular phrase from this tune that I think really exemplifies everything that we should be thinking about when we're soloing. So let's think about the best solos. The best solos that we hear are both very memorable and catchy, and they also take you places, right? So they impress you, they make you think, they make you hear new sounds, but they also exemplify the jazz tradition of playing really catchy things that you could sing back or play back almost instantly. And Dexter Gordon is a true master of these things that I just mentioned. He has a way of interspersing his solos with this amazing bebop playing that really weaves in and out of the changes, along with playing these phrases that are just like you you walk away from the recording with them stuck in your head, singing them. And that's a phrase that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at an eight-bar phrase that I think has all of these elements in it. So this is the second half of one of the choruses. You'll have to go through the recording to kind of find this and uh, you know figure out where it is, and then you can play it along with him. Um, But this is an eight bar phrase that he starts off with this really, really catchy melody that's very simple and melodic and just makes you go, wow, he's like totally swinging. And then he finishes up the phrase by taking it somewhere and playing a little bit more bebop oriented material towards the end of the phrase. So let me start by playing it for you. And then we'll discuss what makes this so awesome, in my opinion. So here's the eight bar phrase in question. Make sure you have the PDF in front of you while you listen to this.
It's just such a cool phrase. I think you can hear at the beginning of the phrase how catchy it is. So we're going to go over everything. But the first thing that we need to think about before we think about any of the notes is the way that Dexter plays it. I want to emphasize the fact that without the feel that he plays it with, the feel of his time, his sound, it means nothing. So you want to think about that first. Always, always think about the way that the artist plays it before you start to analyze anything that's actually going on with it in a technical way. So that's like the first thing that comes to mind when I think about this phrase. Now let's break it down a little by little. So the first thing that I think is amazing about this phrase is that opening line. Boo do bo de da bo de da da that really catches you right off the bat. You hear that and you can almost instantly sing it back. It's so swinging the way that he plays it. And then he proceeds to play it again. And he tags it with something a little bit different at the end. So he's already starting to evolve this phrase and take it somewhere. And that's just amazing. But I love how catchy that is. And for somebody like Dexter who plays so many like complicated bebop lines, one of my favorite things about his playing is how he interjects with these sing-song phrases that come out that are just pure melodicism. I love that, love that about his playing. So then if you look at the second line of your PDF example, he starts it exactly the same. He goes, you know, five to one, but then he takes it into a little bit more of an involved bebop-ish line. So if you look at measure six of the example, he's starting to use some arpeggiation. He uses on beat two, he uses a chromatic approach tone to the third over the concert F chord. And then he comes down and he, you know, surround, he does an enclosure going into beat one of measure seven. He plays, you know, the fourth and then the ninth, and then he resolves that to the third. So now we're moving into a little bit more of that bebop-centric playing towards the end of the phrase. So let's think about this for a second. He started it with this ultra catchy thing. He repeated it, tagged it with a little bit of something different, and then the third phrase starts with exactly the same two notes, but then he takes it into something that's gonna propel him even further into the end of that phrase. And then at that point, he can basically do whatever he wants. But really, I mean, this education, studying these master jazz musicians, there's nothing like it. There's no replacement for that type of education. Really sitting down and thinking about how did Dexter, what was he maybe thinking about when he came up with this phrase? And I'm sure he wasn't thinking too hard about it, but this is just all those hours of practicing and studying the music paying off when he plays just a brilliant genius phrase like this. And uh, I think it's something to behold. It's something to really think about. And if you're not paying attention to this kind of stuff, um, I think that you're kind of, you're doing it wrong. We got to learn from the masters and he is truly a master. So what did we learn from this? What can we take away from this? If we're not playing some part of our solos that just grabs the listener and some stuff that can the listener can just sing back or play back instantly, I truly believe that we are not harnessing the true power of this music. If all we're going to play is just a stream of consciousness notes, it can be kind of the hippest stuff in the world, but if we don't intersperse our solos with just this kind of pure, unadulterated melodicism, I don't think it's as effective. And again, Dexter was just the master of this, but even the more modern players, if you really study their solos, they do this. They do this all the time. Otherwise, it just becomes exhausting to listen to. Even with trained ears like ours, um, our, we really like that kind of stuff because it just gives us a break. It gives us you know, time to regroup before the next like super hip, amazing, you know, chord substitution that we're going to do. It just gives us a little bit of like, oh, 
I recognize that right off the bat. So I think that's the thing to take away from this. Work on some of that pure melodicism. All right, let's listen to that one more time before we leave off on this episode. You know, it really just gets me every time. Every time I listen to it, it never gets old. I talked about this on another episode where I think that, you know, for me, this is just like the most badass music that I've ever heard. Um, it really is. I can listen to it again and again and again and just never get tired of it. We're going to be moving into some episodes like this where I'm going to talk to you about um, playing less complicated stuff, playing over less complicated forms, playing less complicated material. I'm really learning how to play a melody, an effective melody. So those are going to be some of the ones that are coming up. And next month's Lick of the Month is also going to be over this tune. Um, there's another part in this tune that I think really exemplifies kind of what we're talking about today. So we're going to do a bit of a series on what Dexter is teaching us through his playing and some of the places we can go with it, some of the things we can think about. All right, so make sure you go and grab that PDF. I'm also thinking about doing a project where I'm gonna transcribe the entire record. I'm gonna transcribe all of the album Go and put it out as a PDF set, possibly uh, an actual physical book. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in uh, because that's gonna be quite a project and I wanna make sure it's worth it for you guys before I do it. Um, so let me know if you'd like to see every single solo that Dexter Gordon plays on the record go uh, compiled into a volume. You can let me know by emailing me 10minutejazzlesson at gmail.com or you can drop a note in the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson community Facebook group. Let me know if that's something you might be interested in. All right, so we'll see you next week with some brand new episodes. Hope you have a great weekend. Listen to some Dexter Gordon. Um, try to... Let some of that music rub off on you. One of the best things you can do. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye.